This Week at NASA. Administrator Charles Bolden joined other NASA officials on Capitol Hill for an agency showcase called NASA Technology, Imagine, Innovate, Explore. The event, hosted by members of Congress, included displays from various companies and six NASA centers that demonstrate how NASA space and aeronautics technologies help enable agency goals while also creating or improving products and services that benefit life here on Earth. Technology development is the key to our future. If you look at everything that we want to do, whether it's a heavy lift launch vehicle, a multi-purpose crew vehicle, commercial crew, uh, everything we do is dependent on, on improving on the technologies that we have today because we've got to go farther, faster, uh, and we've got to find better ways to do it. What you're seeing here today are not only great ideas that benefit the space program, uh, you're seeing great ideas that have turned into products, services that bring wealth, as to Congressman Robacher explained, bring wealth to our country. Attendees also had an opportunity to discuss space travel with astronauts Mike Massimino and Mike Good. He's been to infinity and beyond. But now Buzz Lightyear is at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum's Moving Beyond Earth Gallery. The museum hosted a presentation attended by NASA and Pixar, creators of Buzz Lightyear and the animated Toy Story franchise, during which the action figure which flew on Space Shuttle Discovery to the International Space Station in 2008 was donated to the museum. NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver was there on behalf of the agency. Innovative ways to communicate to students and the public about the value of the International Space Station is what this mission was all about for us. This great little action figure was about the real life saga of space exploration. It was a fantastic program between NASA and Disney to send Buzz up and did a tremendous education program you know, for, for children all over the world, and I was so proud. A panel discussion during the event included NASA footage of Buzz in space. Buzz Lightyear will go on display in the gallery later this year. During a recent visit to CFD Research Corporation in Huntsville, Alabama, NASA Chief Technologist Mason Peck was briefed on some of the firm's newest technologies. CFD Research, a woman-owned company, develops technologies and provides innovative solutions for aerospace and defense, biomedical and life sciences, energy, materials, and other industries. It has received numerous NASA Small Business Innovation Research Awards to develop software solutions that enable NASA missions and have potential for commercial applications. NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver spoke to students at Luther Jackson Middle School in Falls Church, Virginia as part of the USA Science and Engineering Festival's Nifty 50 Times 2 program. The program sends more than 100 people who, like Garver, are considered to be leaders in the fields of science and engineering into Washington area schools before the festival to inspire students' passion for science and engineering. The event, which will take place April 28th and 29th at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center in D.C., is the country's only national science festival. During a luncheon given by the Aero Club of Washington at the Capitol Hilton in D.C., NASA Administrator Charles Bolden updated the audience on the latest NASA initiatives and the agency's fiscal year 2013 budget request. The Aero Club fosters interest in aeronautics and hosts regular forums to discuss issues with leaders in the field. NASA's proposed budget would enable the agency to continue the space exploration program outlined by President Obama one that creates jobs and stimulates the American economy well into the future while sending us farther into space than ever before. The European Space Agency's Eduardo Almaldi Automated Transfer Vehicle 3 cargo craft automatically docked to the aft port of the International Space Station's Russian Zvezda service module on March 28th. Contact is confirmed at 5.31 p.m. Central Time. The Eduardo Almaldi has arrived. After a five-day journey that began with its launch from Kourou, French Guiana, on March 23rd. The cargo ferry named Eduardo Almaldi for the Italian physicist and spaceflight pioneer is loaded with more than seven tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the six crew members on the orbital laboratory. 
It is expected to remain docked to Zvezda for about six months. Two, one, zero. We have launched the Terrier Oriole. The early morning skies above the Wallops flight facility on Virginia's eastern shore were lit up by the launch of five sounding rockets in about five minutes to study the high altitude jet stream. Wallops and Clemson University teamed up for this anomalous transport rocket experiment, or ATREX. Each of the five rockets released a tracer. The milky white trail-shaped clouds they formed allowed scientists to see the high altitude winds. The tracers were visible from South Carolina to the northeastern states. NASA Associate Administrator for Aeronautics Research, Jay Wan Shin, and Ames Research Center Director, Pete Worden, recently signed an agreement at Ames to establish the NASA Aeronautics Research Institute. The institute will be comprised of multidisciplinary, multi-institutional teams seeking innovative ideas to address present and future technological challenges faced by aviation and the U.S. air transportation system such as reducing air traffic congestion and environmental impacts, improving safety, and designing aircraft with unconventional capabilities. The Institute will also seek to stimulate collaboration among technical disciplines and between NASA, academic institutions, and other government and industry organizations dedicated to aeronautics research. The annual FIRST Robotics Competition is in full swing with some 60,000 high school students competing in regional challenges using robots they built in six weeks from a common kit of parts. NASA Science Chief and former astronaut John Grunsfeld was at the D.C. Convention Center to help kick off Washington's regional competition. When I was growing up, there weren't programs like this where I could get with like-minded kids and we could work on a project together to build something great. For me, it was more a question of surviving the process and still staying interested in science. And it's so crucial today that we have programs like this so that kids can grow together to grow stronger and to help our nation. NASA is the largest sponsor of the National first program, supporting five regional competitions and more than 280 teams. The D.C. region includes high school teams from Virginia, Maryland, Washington, and several other states. FIRST stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Here's a look at some of the competition from around the country. Since January, high school FIRST Robotics teams across the country have worked tirelessly to build, program, and test robots in preparation for upcoming regional and national tournaments. In Hampton Roads, the NASA Knights and Triple Helix teams, both sponsored by NASA Langley, spent nights and weekends getting their 120-pound robot ready for this year's challenge called Rebound Rumble. What it basically is is shooting foam basketballs up into basketball hoops that are arranged in a diamond pattern at both ends of the field. The higher baskets are worth more points. Around 60 robotics teams competed in the Virginia Regional Tournament held at Virginia Commonwealth University Siegel Center, all with the hopes of making it to the national tournament in St. Louis this April. This year's game presented new challenges, even for a seasoned team like the NASA Knights. But this year had a lot of neat challenges. We actually got a vision tracking system working where we could use a camera and see where the backboard is and then judge your distance by the size of the backboard and spin our motors up accordingly, which is something we've never really done before and is really neat to uh, figure out how all of that works. Both the NASA Knights and Triple Helix feel confident about their robots and are looking forward to making it to nationals. I'm really excited. I think we did really well this year and I'm looking forward to seeing how everything pans out. FIRST Robotics is not only fun, but offers students real engineering experience and may inspire them to pursue careers in STEM. I had no idea what I wanted to be before I joined the team, but now I want to be a chemistry major. So, and I would have been interested in chemistry, but if not for robotics, I probably wouldn't have ever considered it as a career. The 21st Los Angeles Regional FIRST Robotics Competition at the Long Beach Convention Center proved to be a true battle of the minds. With support from volunteers from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and other institutions, 66 high school teams from California, Nevada, Brazil, and Chile 
put their student designed robots to the test. I learned so much because I basically I already wanted to go into engineering, so I just learned so much about robotics and so many me of the mechanics about it. I had so much fun. I learned how to communicate, I learned how to build a robot, I learned how to problem solve and get things done really quickly while like learning how to apply the math and science I've learned since I was a little kid. It was the best thing ever. The winners from this competition will represent the Southern California region at the first championships in April at the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis against 51,000 other students on more than 2,400 teams. For a more detailed roundup of recent first robotics action involving a NASA center near you, stay tuned to NASA TV or check out nasa.gov and NASA Television's YouTube site. Students from Washington Elementary School in San Jose, California, had an opportunity to speak live with Expedition 30 astronauts Dan Burbank and Don Pettit on board the International Space Station during a Destination Station Downlink event at the Tech Museum of Innovation. The event was part of a NASA campaign to promote space station research opportunities and to educate the public about the ISS. Do you have internet in space and can you take your iPods or iPads to space? <laughs> in conjunction with the event, Ames Research Center held a Space Research Expo and Twitter Town Hall featuring astronaut Rex Walheim. The event included activities and information about how the station improves life on Earth. Two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with the Microgravity Science Laboratory, our research bridge to the space benefits of tomorrow. Fifteen years ago, on April 4, 1997, Space Shuttle Columbia launched from the Kennedy Space Center on STS-83, the first flight of the Microgravity Science Laboratory 1, or MSL-1. The seven-person crew, Commander James Halsell, Pilot Susan Still, Payload Commander Janice Voss, Mission Specialists Don Thomas and Mike Gernhardt and Payload Specialists Roger Crouch and Greg Lanteris were scheduled for 15 days of science activities in orbit. But a malfunction with one of Columbia's fuel cells caused the mission to be cut short. Columbia and its crew landed just three days and 23 hours later, marking only the third time in shuttle program history a mission ended early. In July of 97, Columbia and the same crew reflew the mission, redesignated STS-94, the first reflight of a mission with the same orbiter, crew, and payload. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories or to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.